Hey there, this is Keith from makingrealestatefun.com. I'm with my co-host, Taji and Ray, and we're here at the Humidor in Lyle, Illinois, and we decided since football season's coming up, we thought we would come and talk a little about football. One of the best things is, is this new lounge that Humidor put up in Lyle is 24,000 square feet. So if you're gonna come and smoke cigars, you wanna enjoy yourself, this is the place to do it. So. You can't really get into smoking cigars, did you? I do it when I'm golfing only, which is weird. That was how I was introduced to it. Now I feel like the only place I can never smoke a cigar is when I go golfing. I feel like I look funny. Like you look like you look smoke like a cigar. You just look the part. Whereas me, I'm like, oh, how do I hold this? <laughs> can you open this for me? Well, you know, I, I don't smoke cigars all the time. But on occasion, you know, if you go to the racetrack, if you go to the golf course, if you go to a football game and you're tailgating, I mean, those are the kind of places I like to smoke cigars. Yeah, yeah. definitely a cool place to check out. Yeah. 1600 Ogden Avenue in Lyle. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a great place. I mean, just come on over and check it out. I mean, you will be amazed at this. I mean, this is great. We're in the Avo Lounge right now. This is for members only. And uh, they, they have a lot of public areas here, but. The one thing is, is that you can actually enjoy yourself in this whole entire place. They're going to be building all kinds of stuff upstairs. Yeah, I always thought that in order to smoke cigars, you had to smoke cigarettes and stuff. Like, I don't smoke cigarettes, never have smoked cigarettes. And so when somebody was like, you want a cigar? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then they, they lured me over to the dark side. And so, you know, on the golf course, I'll, I'll do it. But yeah, just, you know. Well, you know, that's a hard thing to deal with because, you know, it's not a good habit. Smoking cigars is not a good habit. It's against the, uh, what is that, the uh, Surgeon General tells you you're going <laughs> to get cancer or something like that. So, I don't know. But either way, I mean, they give you a hard time for drinking a beer, uh, doing whatever. So, I just enjoy life and do what we got to do. <laughs> Every, everything in moderation. Exactly. So, today we want to talk a little football. You tell me about football. Do you know anything? So anytime people get to talking about football, it's basically like they're speaking alien to me. So I know <laughs> absolutely nothing about football. So, uh, you know, there's nothing for me to really, as you guys are talking, I'm just going to be, you guys are going to be saying like, wah, 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 <laughs> wah, 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 wah. So I, I have no idea. But luckily, uh, Keith has been kind enough to uh, to write down a list of questions, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be like the the uh, the Arsenio Hall uh, <laughs> here today <laughs> for for you. And that uh, goes really well because <laughs> Cleveland Dog Pound, you know that's that's their Dog Pound in Cleveland, you know. That's <laughs> for you millennials, you probably will have no idea who Arsenio Hall is, but uh, Google him and uh, it'll be fine. Wait, but yeah. so you don't know nothing about football. I, I may know what teams go with which states sometimes. Okay. Okay. Um, I may know of a superstar player here and there, but outside of that, no. I mean, I, I, know, I know, you know, the goal of the sport and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I can, you know, that, but I... Opposite of golf, you want to score as many points as possible, not the least amount. Absolutely. So what's your sport of choice? So I like MMA. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't really call this a sport, but I like uh, professional wrestling. That's not really, it's not really a sport, it's more acting. I'm right there with you. But, uh, you That's know, me, me, and, me and Ray are, are kindred spirits on that. Right, like that. so I only hear half of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, the outside of that, I, I, you know, I've never really been into sports that much. Oh, that's enough. okay. Cool. Let's talk some football. Yeah, man, we're, we're right here coming into this, you know, I think we're in the second week, or just got done with the second week of preseason. Uh, there's four weeks of preseason, and then we go into the real thing. And I can't wait for that. Yeah. You know? So, I know one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is, is fantasy football. And so, you know, that's kind of always been something, every time I hear about it, like, what the heck is... Fantasy football, I mean, are there strippers? What, what is going on? <laughs> what is fantasy football? So what is fantasy football and why are people so attracted to it? So fantasy football is kind of a, I guess, a way 
for non-football people to maybe enjoy the game a little bit better. Uh, yeah. By that is, uh, you know, group of people, um, they get together and have a fantasy football draft. So what that entails is you're drafting or picking players from uh, all the NFL teams, uh, and depending on how your league scores, you know, the, you get paired up together. So I'll, uh, one week I'll face Keith, right? And my group of NFL players against him, his group of NFL players. And depending on how the scoring goes, the, the team with the highest score at the end of the, of the I guess, the week wins. Okay. And the more wins you go, you, you, there's playoffs, there's a, there's a fantasy football uh, Super Bowl, I guess. I yeah, think. and you know, and, and, and it goes back to gambling, too. Mm -hmm. Wagering. Because if we have a 10-team league or a 12-team, we might each put in $100. Okay. So now there's 1000 or $1,200 in purse money that we can decide how we want to split up. First prize gets $500, second prize gets $300, you know. And so we do it that way, just like NFL, where, you know, the teams go then to the playoffs and then to the Super Bowl. Same thing with fantasy football. All right, so this is fantasy in that you're basically wanting to pick all-stars, ideally, for your team. This is like, man, if I had all these people and I created a football team, this right. is who I would pick. Right. Exactly. Got it. It's kind of like, um, have you heard the new apps with uh, FanDuel or mm -hmm. DraftKings? Draft mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So those two specific uh, companies, when they created those apps, they kind of took fantasy football and kind of changed it. So instead of doing a whole season where Keith and I are a little bit more in-depth with, uh, we like to run a whole team for the whole season, right? Yeah. Whereas DraftKings or FanDuel, you're picking one group of NFL teams, and it's only for that week. Okay. And then you do it again you know, the next week, or you can have multiple teams. But that one is a little bit more, you got to pay daily and, and stuff, so... So no dancers or anything like that. I guess you could, depending on the league, to be a real fantasy <laughs> You could get up and do your happy dance, you know, if you're winning, but... Dang you know, it. Yeah, it's not happening. Got it. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. So I got this list of questions here. So this is, I guess, to help uh, guide me and also guide, you know, some of those out there that may not be familiar with or um, may not be... Um, may not know a lot about, fan you know, fantasy football, so... We'll get started on some of those and uh, go from there. Well, that's cool. And you know what's really fun is, you know, each of these different ESPN, CBS Sportsline, all these, Yahoo, they have their experts. And their experts seem to think they know everything. Right. But there's guys that, you know, may do well. Somebody may get hurt. They're out. There's a new guy in. And so it changes all the time. So you have to be adaptable and pay attention. Got it. It's almost... It's almost like a full-time job, so, because it, it right. is. I mean, it's not my full-time job, though. Trust me, it is not. <laughs> but I'm actually in a fantasy baseball league, and that's almost like a daily. Oh, thing. that is. Oh, it's a daily yeah. thing. So depending again, uh, we won't get too much into that because I don't want to confuse you. But depending on your league, it can be, it can be tedious. Right. Got it. Right. All right. So let's get started. So hit it. Hit. So, what position do you draft first? For your teams. Well, we'll no, yeah, you go ahead. You tell yeah, me what you think. Yeah. Before the the different types of leagues were created, the auction league and the and the PPR league, all that stuff. And PPR play, is uh, points per points reception. per reception. And we'll we'll so explain that, that a little later. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. before that, traditionally, most teams would draft a running back. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. And and so here, when you think about it like that, so there's. 32 teams. Well, if there's 32 teams, there's one key running back for every one of those. Okay. But when you're talking about receivers, there's usually two really good ones or okay. three. And so you really need to get, a, a, I think, a, a running back right off the bat. Yeah. Um, the, I guess one of the main uh, reasons for that is you always want to have, obviously, to get the more points per, per uh, NFL player, right? The running back is probably the one that, besides the quarterback, will probably hold the or carry the ball the most, whether it be running it or catching it. Got it. You know, so you can get points for yards that he's run or catches that he's caught 
or yards that he's received or even touchdowns. So usually the running back gets the bulk of that. So usually most fantasy managers like to draft a running back first. So, and this goes by how they actually perform in the game. So right. they run, you know, a specific amount of yardage or, you know, specific amount of touchdowns, whatever it is. And based on what they do, translates into your, exactly. your right. fantasy so, team. So let's just say uh, a running back scores a touchdown. He gets six points. Yeah. Because that's what the team gets, six points. Right. But they, in, in uh, different leagues, maybe for every... Uh, 20, uh, for every 10 yards he runs, you get an extra point. Ah. So you get 100, now you got 10 extra points. He might not score a touchdown at all. He runs 100 yards, you got 10 points. Got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So, but I, I, I like running backs right off the bat. And the hard thing is, is if you're like the number three or four or five, you know, because the top running backs go, then what do you do? Do you take a big running back? Do you take the top quarterback? Do you take the top receiver, because, I mean, there are two good receivers out there. The number one and two are probably Odell Beckham and uh, Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. And those guys score a lot of points. So when they do that, maybe you want to take them instead of one and then come comes around and, and pick up another, make uh, a, a good running back. Okay, got it. <laughs> so, uh, so that kind of leads us into the next question, actually. Um, and it doesn't matter which of you guys goes first, but who's your top quarterback, top running back, top wide receiver, top tight end, top defensive end? So oh, let's answer so this. You give me the first quarterback, I'll come back and get the second. Right, well, well, quarterback first. Quarterback, I mean, it's, it's usually at the top two, and it's always going to be Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Again, everyone's going to have their opinion, right? but on an average, within the last five or six years, those two quarterbacks have averaged higher points per game yeah. every, every season. It's pretty consistent. So those two quarterbacks usually are the top two. Um, right. Now, I mean, now you got other quarterbacks. I'm looking at this list here that ESPN put out, who they think is the number one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is. And they have Tom Brady first and Aaron Rodgers second, which is good. I mean, those are probably the top two. I don't know. First of all, I'm not taking Aaron Rodgers. Why not? Because he's not a Bear. And they're playing <laughs> against the Bears. Oh my God. And That's I'm rule not. number one, folks, for fantasy football. You never, ever, ever go with your heart. Because I'm a diehard Bears fan, too. And I would probably not really draft too many bears. I mean, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> yeah, and then right now you wouldn't. Is that you know, <laughs> when, when number 34 was there, you were well, all over. My boy over Rich Trubisky, though, might be an exception. Sleeper. Future oh, question. Right. But uh, the last five years, the bears have kind of been a snooze fest, right? <laughs> it's been really tough. I mean, it's so, been really tough. <laughs> would you be draft in, I would say, the last five years, how many bears have you had in your team? Exactly. <laughs> so, again, yeah. to my point, you got to, depending on where you are drafting, and if Aaron Rodgers is in there, for me, I would choose. Right. And, and you know, see, and I'm going to take a step back because I know you're going to ask us this question. Would we ever take our competitors on a team? So, like, I'm a Bears fan. I don't want Packers on my team. But I've had Packers on my team. They're the kicker. And the reason for it is they might score a number of points, but they're not the guy that's going to beat me. Hopefully, you know. Yeah. I mean, Sometimes my 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 buddy, it's his nephew, you know, uh, Mason Crosby, right. and I would pick him all the time. But you know, but I, I don't know. There's a lot of quarterbacks out there right now. I think uh, I think uh, Cam Newton is really good. He's going to do just a lot of scoring. Um, I think Russell Wilson with Seattle might do. Pretty well. So those two are a different those dynamic. Are right. Those two are dynamic because Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, right. Right, they kind of sit back and they just use their arm, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Russell Wilson and Cam Newton, yeah. they can run as right. well, and those can get you additional points too. So it's something to think about. Okay. For running backs, I would say the top <clears throat> two would probably be... I know who my number one is. Uh, Le'Veon Bell and probably... Todd Gurley. Oh, yeah. yeah. Todd, Todd, Todd Gurley is like, yeah. 
He's a baller. I mean, that guy he's a monster. came in. He's a monster. They're going to give him the ball a lot. He's on a good team. They need him to score. Yeah. And he's been really good. Nice. The, the hard thing is, is again, you only have one usually good quarterback or running back on each team. So which one do you take? You know, Le'Veon Bell, he's awesome for Pittsburgh. I mean, I think the guy is just great. I, I mean, maybe he'll be my number one or two, but there's a lot of good yeah. a lot of good running backs. See, it, it's different when you're in fantasy football. Usually how it works is um, you get a roster position, right? So you'll get one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers. Right, you have to start those. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, one tight end, one kicker, one defense, usually how it goes. And then you've got like a five or six bench guys, right? Yeah. So how it works when you draft is, let's say there's 10 teams, right? The first guy's gonna pick, obviously, the best guy out there, right? Who they think is, Who the, they best think is the best guy. And then it's right. gonna go from, you know, one to 10. Right. And when it comes back to round two, now 10 will draft first in the second round. So it'll kind of snake around. Snake around. Come so on. this guy might get the top running back, the, num the number one guy. Yeah. When it comes back down, you know, the other running backs, the good running backs are probably gone. You're probably two good quarterbacks are probably going to be gone. Yeah. And probably your your two wide receivers are probably going to be gone. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go whatever's kind of left over, whatever's best available. Right. So it kind of wraps around in the snake, so it's a little bit fair. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So at that time, you're just going to want to fill up your roster spots. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So to answer this question, um, Gurley and... Le'Veon Bell, what about uh, receivers or tight ends? Well, wait, I, let, let's take a step back. I, I think you got Kareem Hunt with Kansas City is going to be really good. Mm. They're going to need him even more he this could, year yeah, with a new that, quarterback. Be careful because that's a sophomore slump. That could be a sophomore well, slump. Well, that's true. That's they always say it's a sophomore slump, you know. Because when you first come out, nobody knows how you play. You yeah. know, you're, you're dipping and diving. You're, you're catching everything. Now that Tape's been on you. You can they can study you. You know, usually that they call a sophomore some kind of like the NBA or even with the baseball. You know, you have a great year that first year, right? When you come out of rookie year, you're pumped, trying right. to get that, trying to get that contract, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. But then now everybody knows how you play, and then you may, you may, maybe you might struggle. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this year, Saquon Barkley, great running back, went to the New York Giants. Right. He's supposed to be a baller. I mean, he could be the number one running back. The only reason I don't like him that high is the New York Giants offense is horrible. Right. And they have not had a running back at all, and, and they they need some help. Got it. But, you know, there's a lot of players out there. All right, wide receiver, tight end, defense. Oof, man, I got to get this list out because well, there's a lot of good wide receivers. There's a ton. I mean, the top two is probably Antonio Brown, no doubt. Yeah. And probably Odell Beckham. Right? Probably right. top two. Right. And Odell Beckham plays for the New York Giants. Cheat. No, no, no. I'm going to look for a couple that aren't on everybody else's top list. Right. Because I uh, like Julio Jones. Julio Jones for Atlanta. I mean, that guy can catch anything anywhere. I like that guy. I don't even know where they have him. They have him as number two here. There you go. But Again, it's everyone's opinion. Yeah. Right. I mean, you got uh, Hopkins. Hopkins from Houston. That guy is phenomenal. He should have a great year as long as Deshaun Watson, their quarterback, can stay healthy and, and get, get on the That's ball. another thing, too. Injury plays a big part of it. Big you time. might have the best wide receiver out there, uh, let's say Antonio Brown, the yeah. best, one of the best wide receivers. But if Ben Roethlisberger is hurt and you've got a rookie quarterback or a journeyman quarterback that doesn't really throw that far or yeah. likes to be conservative, Antonio Brown now <coughs> might not be a valid <coughs> pick yeah right so injury plays a part of it too so okay all right so well, hold on hold on let's get to the tight ends because oh, that's okay. an important position here all right let's do it so for me everybody I, likes Gronkowski I mean I don't know he's like the he's number the horse, one of course he's gonna be he's a monster a lot of people pick him in the first round because he because he gets catches the, as many catches many. everything right I mean he averages probably 10 12 points every week yeah just by the yardage and the but yeah Gronkowski and probably Kelsey? Yeah, Kelsey from Kansas City should do very well. There's a couple of sleepers in that area, too. You know, Jimmy Graham used to be a really good receiver. He caught nine touchdowns last year on a crappy team. And now... Now he's got Aaron Rodgers. He's got uh, Aaron Rodgers, again, a guy that I really don't like. So now that he's on Green Bay, are you going to draft him? 
If he's I, out I, there. I, you know what? I actually did draft him in one of my leagues. <laughs> But because I think he's going to have a big year. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have a little tougher time. And I think he's not going to have the guys that he can throw to a million miles. And I think he's going to have a really good year. And if he scores 10 touchdowns for me and the Green Bay Packers lose to the Bears twice, I'm happy. There you go. You know? There you got, go. it. got it. Got it. All right. So then uh, I think the last one was defense. You know, defense is always tough. Minnesota's really good. Um, I like uh, I like the Rams. Yeah, I like the LA Rams. Rams so I think they've sure. improved a lot. Um, I think they're probably one of the best. In fact, that's why I took them in my other league. Yeah, probably Philly. Philly might be good. Um. I mean, though, to me, those are the top couple. There's, you know, the thing is when you get the fantasy football, what are you getting points for? You know, are you going to intercept the ball? You're going to get points for yeah. getting it, running it back for a touchdown, things like yeah, that. Sacks. For myself, I treat a defense kind of like kicker. I mean, if, if I get the top great, the top defense, great. If I don't, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, and you might take them. So depending on how many draft, so, so you might have like 16 spots that you're going to be able to take. Mm. You might take them in number 9 or 10 or maybe 11. It just depends on how far down, who's taking who. You know, so they'll start on a run and... So with the defense, you're picking a whole team. Then. Yes. A whole team's right. defense guy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So anytime that's that they get a sack or they force a fumble or they score a touchdown on a fumble or something, right. they get points for it. Right. Got it. You know, and then again, there are thousands of different kind of leagues where my league, if you throw a touchdown, you'll get six points. Like we, what, right. they, what NFL does. But on Keith's league, their commissioner can set it up where a thrown touchdown can be eight points. Or you know, four so, points. Or, yeah, or, or even know. less. Yeah. So... It all depends. So you want to always read your rules, read your um, how many moves you can make, yeah. and um, the roster spots that you have to fill out because it, it all it all depends. And kickers, you know, kickers. I mean, the top six or seven are all very close together. You know, Lutz for New Orleans is really good. You know, he's probably one of the top kickers out there. Got it. But you won't take him till later on. All right. <laughs> Get rid of that thing. <laughs> um, so we talked about this a couple of times before, but uh, best sleepers. Well, you know, that's a good question. Trubisky? Trubisky? You really think he's going to be a sleeper? He'll be a great backup quarterback. Well, you know, here's the thing. I like, I like Trubisky. He's a really good quarterback. Um, the thing is, he's got a really good new coach. Right. And he likes to do things yeah. the way he did them in Kansas City. Right. Which is why... I know you're going with this, which is why I think both is his tight ends. Trey Burton. Uh, Trey Burton and Adam Shaheen will do well as right. sleepers because this coach, uh, Maggie, the Bears coach, came from Kansas City, and he loved throwing it to Travis Kelsey, yeah. the tight end. So i assuming that he's going to be using tight end plays to get those guys pretty active. So those two might be great sleepers. Uh, you know... In their second, I think it was their second um, preseason game. I think it might be their third because they they played the all um, the Hall of, Fame Hall of Fame game. But they threw five times to Trey Burton. He caught it four times for like forty-seven yards. And this was in a matter of not even a quarter. So now you got four quarters. This guy is going to be good. He's a sleeper. He is the probably the number one sleeper I have. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> I just like doing that. Can you tell? Yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, do you take a player that is on a team that's your rival team? Oh, so going back to that, I'm going to stop it right now. The answer is I do not want somebody on the Packers because they are my biggest rival. But he just drafted Jimmy. Yeah. Well, you know, every once in a while well, you got to go. <laughs> I... I... At first, I didn't. When I first played fantasy sports, I never one played anybody against the Bears or, or drafted anybody that was in the same division. Same with baseball. I didn't want to draft anybody that was going in the same division as the White Sox. But I realized quickly that by me doing that, I would lose out on great players. Right. Like Aaron Rodgers. And it's all about the money. Yeah. You're not gonna. You're not gonna make any money when your team wins, if you're just rooting for them all year, right. unless you bet on them. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, sometimes I kick myself and I, I don't think I've ever been in a position where I really could say I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers when I'm looking at this stuff. But yeah. he's probably one of the few I would take. Um, Randall Cobb should be a decent running back. I mean, receiver this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, see, for fantasy, uh, you don't lose fantasy football in the first two or three rounds because everyone's going to have the first round, player. the right. second round, maybe even the third round players. Yeah. Those guys are superstars mm -hmm. and everyone's going to have their share of superstars two three or four future. it's the rounds like seven and seven through 15 right those ones where there's like where there's people that oh i forgot about him or you know i'm going to take a shot on him maybe he's going to do well or maybe one of the superstars get hurt and one of the backup guys step up and they do really well so yeah. that's where fantasy football is one seventh round <clears throat> and beyond yeah so yeah, a couple years back when the Denver Broncos had a great running back and all of a sudden he goes down, I pick up Terrell Davis, second, you know, second guy. And he was like one of the leading in the whole league. Right. The guy was phenomenal. And he was a sleeper you don't even think about. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley, running back, I, he's going to be a question mark. I don't know if he's going to be as good as people really think he's going to be. He's going to be really right there or not. Yeah, I see him as, <clears throat> I put him in the category with LaDainian Tomlinson. Yeah. When he first came out, he was the next big thing. Right. He was okay the first year, maybe even the second year. It was that third year when he was catching, throwing. I mean, he was even throwing touchdowns in right. San Diego. Oh, yeah. And he became great. I mean, Barkley right now, everyone, all the analysts love him. You know, they always say that he's the next big thing. And, you know, he could or he couldn't. It's, it's just the gamble. He won't be on my team unless I get him way down. <clears throat> got it, got it. <laughs> <laughs> you just like doing that, don't you? <laughs> um, do you like a keeper league? Uh, See, I, so I've got four leagues. Uh -huh. Wait, is well, look, let me back up real fast before we even get into that. What the hell is a keeper league? <laughs> so it's the same as fantasy football, except you get to keep last year's roster so or part of it or part of it or so one person depending on your league the way that we've got it is we've got you know 15 guys from last year right mm -hmm. in our league you get to keep at least two of them from last year and meaning if i kept if i have aaron Rodgers and barkley let's just say mm -hmm. i have that option to bring them over to this squad that i've got now there's different rules that i've got for that for in my league for keepers, but that's usually what it means. You get to keep, you know, people or right. one person from your last year's team. So, uh, like, so I'm in a couple of leagues too. One of them, you can keep two players to the next season, but you okay. can only keep them one time. Then they go back in. So, you know, if, if I had a great quarterback and a great running back, I could keep both of them until next year. But then next year, I can't keep them. They go back in the exactly. draft just like everybody else. Yeah, so ours, our league, we can't keep anybody that was drafted in the first two rounds. So all the good players get recycled every oh, time. Oh, there you go. That's great. So with help. ours, um, if you kept somebody that you drafted in, say, the seventh round, and you want to keep him, then this time, this year, he'll move up two rounds. So he'll be my fifth round pick. And then if you keep them up from the scrap heap, if you get because there's free agency too, okay. not every NFL player gets drafted in fantasy football, right? Right. There's again injuries. There's people that just suck, and you want to <laughs> add and drop, right? If right. Barkley becomes terrible, you just want to get him off your team. You just put him in the free agency and grab somebody else. Yeah. So in my league, one of them, you can keep two players for the one year. Now we just change it this year. You can only keep one player, and I like that idea because you know what. If you got if you got twelve or ten teams and everybody keeps two players, well, most likely they're going to be some of the top players all the way. Yeah. So I like it. You can keep one for a year, and it goes back. And it's a really interesting concept because now when you see the you know who's got the keepers, now when you're drafting, you think, okay, he's he he has he has a running back already, so he's probably going to take a, a receiver or a quarterback. Okay. So it's sort of a mental thing to try to figure out what they're going to do, which you can't figure We out. should do a fun fantasy bragging rights between the three of us, maybe these two, 
Yeah. You know, just for fun. Well, he needs some help. Just so you can see what it's like. He needs some help. You can see what it's like. Maybe we can set him up as an auto draft or something. At the yeah, meeting. we could do that. You know, just for fun, so you can kind of see it. And then I'm telling you, after that first year, year you'll be you'll, you'll be, be hooked. hooked. And then what's funny is <laughs> you don't watch football now, but when you say, "Man, he's on my fantasy team. Let's see what he's doing." Right. You're gonna end up watching not just that team. You're gonna be watching all of NFL. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, there was a time where I had, geez. Six, five or six leagues, and it was, <laughs> I almost had to root for every person in the NFL. Were you, were you married yet? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I was rooting for everybody and also rooting against everybody because I had so many players. And, oh yeah. Yeah. It, no doubt. It, it gets too much, but. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So that well, is that the. Is uh, well, so yeah, a couple of things I just wanted to talk about because one of the things that I figured out is. Like I said, all these guys think they know everything about football, and many of them do. I mean, they're much more qualified than we are, I believe. But I look at this thing, and I made some notes today, and I said, Andrew Luck. Now, he's a quarterback that got hurt, hasn't been on, on the field for a while, and I mean on the field for what, a year and a half. Maybe. And so he plays for Indy. He's back now. These guys... The specialists think he's so good, they ranked him for like the number four quarterback out of all the quarterbacks in the league. They have him ranked, and, and what they do is they say, okay, well, the top players. So they might say, this guy's first, this guy's second. It doesn't matter what position. They just think, who's the best players? ESPN has him ranked 13th. Right. Ahead of Hopkins, unbelievable receiver. Keenan Allen, great running back. I'm sorry, uh, a receiver. And Michael Thomas for New Orleans. I mean, I can't believe that these guys have him so high. Right. And then I looked at it and I go, they have him ahead of all of these quarterbacks. Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, right. Phillip Rivers, Roethlisberger, Deshaun Watson, Stafford, I mean... It's, to me, it's amazing how they think this guy's going to do so well. And he might, but you know what? It's going to take him a while to come back, and I wouldn't put him on my list. Of, and I wouldn't draft him as a number one quarterback, and there's, you know. When he was, before he got injured, he was a top, he was a top quarterback. If he wasn't one, right. he was 1A or maybe 1B. He was right. right up there. To put it in perspective, what he's saying is these analysts, they put him up like Tiger Woods, he he just came back from injury, you know, a couple years ago, yeah. and a lot of analysts put them winning majors right away. Yeah. It took time for him, right, to get to right. where he's at. And right. What Keith's saying is, it might take time for for Andrew Luck, but and a lot of these analysts that are saying that he's back and he's going to be right in and, and and go right away. So we'll see. Again, it, again, it's fancy. It is fancy, <laughs> and you know what? It's good for a keeper league because. If you get him in the lower round as maybe a second quarterback and he does really well, you might want to keep him for next year. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get a sleeper right there, even though he, they think he's so high. I don't know about that. But. Okay. Right. So, so now you get a little flavor of fantasy football. Got it. Yeah, he has no idea what we're talking about. I know. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. So. Yeah, I don't know anything about what you guys just said, but... For uh, you know, for our, our audience that uh, that is familiar with fantasy football and all that, you know, they got some great information and you know maybe some add-ons, maybe some takeaways, uh, you know, whatever. So I got one question before we go: Who's your favorite football player of all time? All time, Walter Payton. Mine too. Walter Payton, for sure. I know you don't know. What about MMA? Who's your favorite MMA guy? Favorite MMA guy? Uh, if I'm if I'm going all time, I probably would go with Anderson Silva, even though he's kind of, you know, on his way out. Not not quite as uh, not not quite the same as he was, you know, back when he was he was on fire. But uh, that's probably been my my favorite. Yeah, when that first came out, um, Silva was one of the main guys, but I think the other guy was uh, Chuck Liddell. Oh, Chuck Liddell. I yeah. think he I was the, that, man. Yeah. he was one of the guys where you always saw. Like, oh, the next big guy, Chuck Liddell's fighting this guy, and stuff. I'm like, okay. So then, you know, I would, I'd watch it yeah. just when he's going, but 
I never got into it. I mean, but he's just the name that stuck out. Yeah. Well, he's a, he's, he's a powerhouse and was a powerhouse in, yeah. in that industry. So. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we came today because this is a great place. Uh, smoke a cigar, have a beer, shoot the breeze. And, uh, you know, we'll have to do this more often. Absolutely. Like every week. <laughs> <laughs> Next we'll do fantasy golf. Fantasy golf. I just got <laughs> done with a fantasy golf league and happened to just win it. Like, it's amazing. I know very little about golf. I mean, not that I don't know about golf. I just don't watch it all the time. Right. NFL starts, bam, Thursday night. You might have a Saturday game, Sundays. It's Monday night game. It's, you know. Yeah, either that or My wife not. hates me this season. Every <laughs> season up until Super Bowl. Yeah. So. All right. Either that or you're going to have to do a tutorial on uh, at Arlington Racetrack. You well, you know, we should do that. We should go out to Arlington. Yeah. We, we should definitely do, do that. You can that'll do a track day. That'll be fun. Okay, well, that'll be our next event. Cool. But anyway, we want to thank you for listening to our bullshit today. This has been <laughs> a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, come see us, makingrealestatefun.com anytime. Uh, I know we can hear us on SoundCloud and uh, YouTube. So iTunes, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> everywhere. And Facebook. You know, we have our own Facebook page. And we have the <laughs> coolest stuff on our Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's it, man. It's a wrap. Yep. Have at it. Good luck this season. Thanks for watching Making Real Estate Fun on BLTV. Let us know what you thought in the comments. For more, you can head to makingrealestatefun.com. You can also subscribe to BLTV if you want daily videos and podcasts dedicated to law, business, and lifestyle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.